On today's episode, the real game changer coming out of the war in Ukraine is additive manufacturing. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. It's often said that Vietnam was the first television war, but in this age of social media, it could equally be said that the war in Ukraine is the first first-person view drone war. Those little quadcopters, a Christmas time favorite for kids all over America, have turned out to be a deadly anti-armor weapon, doing what a quarter million dollar anti-tank guided missile can do for a few hundred bucks. How did the Ukrainians achieve this? Well, necessity is the mother of invention. As far back as World War II, the development of the shaped charge warhead meant that handheld rockets could penetrate tank armor. Now, in the Soviet era, the RPG-7 rocket launcher was produced in the millions and shipped all over the world. And it turns out that its relatively lightweight but high-performance warhead could be simply strapped to the bottom of a cheap remote control drone and crash into tanks and armored personnel carriers. It's just about the most primitive expedient on the battlefield since the Molotov cocktail, and it's been surprisingly effective against Russian vehicles. The Russians are also using this technology, but where does a nation like Ukraine get the thousands of small drones needed? Some are purchased on the open market, but additive manufacturing is the secret sauce. Additive offers several critical advantages compared to conventional assembly line production. The first is that it doesn't require special facilities. Single phase residential level electrical service is adequate to run a handful of small machines, which can be dispersed to prevent the production impact of the inevitable targeting of a large manufacturing plant. It's also cheap, both to acquire the 3D printing machines themselves and to manufacture the drone chassis, since no tooling is required and second operations to finish the parts are minimal. And just as importantly, both the machines and the raw materials are commercially available worldwide and are not regarded as weapons or weapon components. And of course, the biggest advantage to additive is scalability. Like CNC machining, once the machine code is set, production runs are limited only by the number of machines available, and those numbers can be in the thousands. Ukrainians are also experimenting with small drones carrying anti-personnel weapons such as thermite and even Kalashnikov assault rifles. So why is all this important? Since the time of the Romans, the standard playbook for small adversaries to fight a larger, more sophisticated adversary is to resort to guerrilla warfare, hit and run tactics, small unit actions, with the intent of wearing down the resolve and the economy of an occupying army until it just doesn't make sense to hold territory. This is significantly different because it allows a smaller adversary to directly confront high technology weapon systems such as armored vehicles, missile launchers, radars, and ships. The current iteration of Ukrainian drone technology now includes low speed winged drones that are striking military targets as far as a thousand miles behind the lines. This is exactly the opposite of what military planners worldwide anticipated that the next European war would look like. And it means that future wars may be fought with skies full of sophisticated drones assembled by almost anyone in kitchens and basements anywhere. And this is just the beginning. Currently, first-person view drones are radio-controlled devices making them subject to jamming and restricting range to the immediate battlefield. GPS guidance allows longer-range drones to hit predetermined targets like oil refineries or military bases, but without the ability to find a target of opportunity as FPV drone operators do. I expect AI will change this dramatically. When both long-range and battlefield drone systems are AI-enabled, and this may be happening as we speak, the lack of any data link will make them almost unstoppable, and they'll exploit long loiter times to inflict more damage than current ways possible with fixed targeting. For example, if you want to target only fuel tankers in a convoy of trucks, that'll be possible, with relays of drones orbiting high overhead and scanning for targets of opportunity. And it's safe to assume that this technology will find its way into the hands of terrorists, as well as combatant nations, introducing the possibility that the next 9-11 style attack may not be single large targets of things like the Twin Towers, but a swarm attack of quad or hexacopters, hitting hundreds or thousands of targets simultaneously with small warheads. So what will the countermeasures be to these drone swarms? Probably other drone swarms, and I can foresee a nascent industry in drone countermeasures blossoming into something that could rival the majors like Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and Lockheed Martin. Of course, it's not all doom and gloom. Amazon is already testing the technology for deliveries, and it could clearly get a pizza to your front door fast and hot. It's also going to completely change your notion of what a privacy fence is in your backyard. And all of it will be supercharged by 3D printing. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. 
For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.